Hi guys, Dane here, and as always, I'm just filming this after the outro of my last vlog, so I've made no progress in Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Thumbnail. But it won't be long. Alright. <laughs> I'm having such a civilised time. I just listened to the tune from the Hovis advert. Anyway, I'm going to go wrap these books up. Hello, it is Thursday. Yes. Uh, I haven't filmed for a few days, um, no particular reason, I've just been super busy really. Um, I was going to do some bits yesterday and like some foodie bits and stuff I was going to capture and my battery's been dead and I forgot to charge it. Went to town earlier and got my hair cut and my beard trimmed, uh, so yes, slightly more presentable. Uh, because this weekend on, well on Saturday I think I'm probably going to be going to volunteer to help at... Uh, offbeat festival in Oxford which my other half like she's on the programming team for it and she was saying they're like a bit short of hands on this Saturday when there's some music on and stuff so I might go and help and then Sunday it's her grandparents 60th wedding anniversary so I need to look good and clean and in a suit so there's that the main thing I have to update you on is that I read Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I read this in like two days. It was really good actually. I get this like a four out of five. It's kind of investigating the kind of idea of uh, the, you know, butterfly effect and how like parallel universes, basically the idea being that a new parallel universe starts every time we, you know, any action is taken. So for example, me deciding to go, rah, 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 in another universe just now, I just decided to go Aree, a wee. So <laughs> that was weird. That got really weird really quickly. But um, yes, yeah, so that's kind of the idea. And then somebody's invented a way to sort of travel between these uh, universes. And it's kind of like a sci fi thriller. It's a bit like, yeah, it's like a science fiction novel mixed with something like Gillian Flynn or something like that. But uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Like I said, I would recommend. And uh, again, it only took me like two days. The Prince decently sized so you don't feel you know it doesn't feel like you're taking forever to read this one and I overall I'm a happy punter so after that I've started reading everything's eventual by Stephen King which is quite good so far I'm on page 120 and uh, basically then I started reading that and then Bex came over yesterday and she's been reading Lock and Key by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez which I got for me as a birthday treat and uh, yeah, she's been reading ahead of me, so I've got volumes four and five to read now. So I finished the Stephen King short story, and I've started on volume four. So that's where we're at. My camera is now blinking at me to tell me we're on low battery again, as always. But um, yeah, that's where we're at. So I'm gonna gonna love you and leave you again for a little bit. Oh, and I'm on the radio later as well. So there's that. Talk about books. And actually speaking of Poirot, he's not in it too much because when he's in it too much, it gets a bit too much because he's he's deliberately written to be insufferable. So, so you know, you're all right if, he, if he's in it here and there. But if he's in it throughout the whole book, I, I just start to get really frustrated with Poirot. I'm just like, bring me back Miss Marple. But uh, yeah. I, I, I didn't know that. So he yeah. is meant to be annoying. Yeah, yeah, he's deliberately. But it, it's kind of, um, yeah, it's kind of almost a bit meta as well because part of it is because because uh, he's Belgian and so at the time he was created there was this mistrust for foreign you know for Johnny Foreigner and yeah, whatnot so uh, well I suppose there probably still is today but we've got a lot better but um, but so I think she was deliberately doing that to make that point you know that and and everything that Poirot does when he's being insufferable it's actually towards an end you know he's not doing it just to annoy people he's doing it because he knows if he annoys so and so they'll reveal their true colours or it'll force you know the killer to make a wrong move or something like that oh ah i'm watching murder mountain it's very good and i've just made vegan nachos and they look amazing hello it is saturday my sleep has been terrible so i went to bed at midnight last night am i zoomed in why am i so zoomed in i went to bed at midnight last night and uh didn't really wake up till about 3 p.m. this afternoon because I've basically been catching up on sleep. So I was going to go to Oxford to help Bex, who is putting on this event with some music. But now the plan has changed and I'm going to meet her on the train 
uh, on the way into London later on today. But I want to quickly do a little update first. So I read This Abstract Mental Thing by Ryan A. Loera, who is Madman Reads and Rocks here on Booktube. And I enjoyed this. Uh, I thought it was quite cool, like all the poems were like the same length. Uh, so they all take up a page and it's technically three collections in one and you know I've read like sorry I've watched some of Ryan's videos where he does some of his poetry So I kind of read this in his voice as well, but I'll read a couple of the, these out. These are just random ones This is a plastic hanger. I pulled the plastic hanger. It broke. Where am I? I took an antihistamine the voice of Walt Whitman echoed in my mind head I ate an egg sandwich hunger is an interesting way to feel feel alive I licked my thumb and recalled my very first word. It was big bird. I was one year old I pulled the plastic hanger its broken piece struck me on my left lens glasses And then we have wish today Wish today was not so unpleasant wish today was not so romantic I'm running low on food. I'm running low on oxygen. A fly lands on my arm. It wishes me a good afternoon. I return the salutation. It buzzes away. A skin condition develops on my neck. I have no clue why. I hear father complain, complain and rejoice and complain some more. Wish today did not exist, but it does. This moment is priceless, it is. So yeah, I gave this like a 3.5 out of five, maybe like a 3.75 out of five. I think it helps that it's bleak and it's my kind of poetry as well, so kind of hit the mark for me. And then I read uh, Lock and Key, Volume 4, Keys to the Kingdom by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. My other half had warned me that this one wasn't as good as the others, and she was kind of right. So, so far it's been like a 4 out of 5, and I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5. I've also moved on to Volume 5, Clockwork, which I've almost finished now. I have about 40 pages left and hoping to finish before I leave and again it's been all right that one's been more like 3.75 but so far the, the, the first three have been my favorites and uh, this this latest one number five has kind of gone we sort of seen a lot back in time and seeing the history of um, uh, Key House a bit more as well so that's kind of cool so yeah there's all that and then I'm going to read some some Stephen King on my travels so that's where I'm at but um, yeah now I'm going to go and film a bit of haul so yeah Oh, my, my vlog finally uploaded that I've been uploading for 10 days. Some bucks. And see some Spike Milligan. Oh, a booktube favourite that I didn't like. <laughs> also have this little stack. Oh. Oh. Cocaine Nights by J.G. Ballard. And I'm wearing a suit. Oh, doggos! Yeah, that's a nice smile. Where's your smile? Yeah. Give us a nice smile. Yeah. He's a good boy. You're a good boy. Good boy. You're both. You're both very good. You're both very very good. Yes, you can have some fuss as well. Okay, I'll just stay here. One. More books. Look at that Shakespeare. Oh. A pigeon. We're at Hill Farm. It's nice here. Very nice. We are in the country road. Hello. Oh no, you're being wet. <laughs> you love it. You want to be in the vlog, don't you? All right. Yeah. So does the dog. Doggo. Hello. Hey buddy. Oh yes. You found a new friend. I'm I'm here to film your first impressions, my love. Oh uh, well, I lose the big penis competition. <laughs> Look at that. Very nice. It is a it is a day for pims. Even though I hate pims, so I'm not having any. Oh, I am with the siblings. Table six. Oh, that's great. Oh,
Beautiful. Is that even me? <laughs> It could do, couldn't it? The herb garden. Herbidacious. Will we be met by um, the, the gardener boy? Do you want a picture of you two there? I love birds and I love seat. Come in. Do you want a picture of you two? Yeah, come in. Yeah, roses. Yeah. I think this is a rose garden. I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. No, some of them grow. It's uh, pasta con broccoli with onion sprinkles and we're watching Ash vs the Evil Dead. Rob, 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 rob. We have vegan nachos. I'll give 
Shakespeare's We're watching Jay Shay. I say we, it's just me. And it won't let me pause it, so we're gonna have to... Sorry, Jay. Okay, it is Wednesday. Um, so, yeah, I haven't actually filmed a specific update recently, but over the weekend, we went to Bex's grandparents for their 60th wedding anniversary, and then we came back on the Monday night, and then Tuesday morning, I had my driving test. I passed first time, hooray. So I can legally drive now. I just don't have a car. Uh, and then last night we went to the open mic night. So I have a few books to update you on and then we're gonna round things off. So I finished reading Inferno by Dan Brown. So this was one that my cat picked out for me, but also I had it as a bedtime book. And I think that worked pretty well because like Dan Brown's fine. You know, he gets a lot of slack. I've compared him to like the Nickelback of literature, but Nickelback are also all right, you know? So. I read like 25 pages at a time and I think that helped me with this. The first couple of hundred pages I didn't much like because there was a bit of a gimmick with like, uh, basically Robert Langdon had uh, uh, amnesia and it was just to serve the story. So basically he could resolve some of the things he'd already solved before and then like see himself on CCTV and not remember it and stuff. But there was some cool stuff in here about like population growth. So basically the bad guy has created this virus because he wants to thin out the human population because our population growth is exponential and we're going to run out of resources on the earth pretty soon and uh, it asked some interesting questions and made me think like how do I stand with that what do I believe you know but uh, overall I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 it was fine it was mainly a 3 out of 5 until the ending and then I liked the ending and that bumped it up for me if you're a Dan Brown fan or you've read the other books up until this point there's no reason to not continue it's not bad it's also not mind-blowing so there you have it but one ticked off and then I read Everything's Eventual by Stephen King. So this is a collection of short stories. It's got 1408 in here, which was turned into a movie, which I haven't seen. What else have we got in here? Uh, autopsy Room 4, that was the first story, and this was about a man who like wakes up on an autopsy table, and the autopsy is in progress, and basically he knows what's happening, but they don't realise, so that was pretty messed up. Uh, the Death of Jack Hamilton, that's like a gangster story. He was um, knocking around with, oh, who was it? John Dillinger, I think. And uh, basically, in real life, there's this conspiracy theory that he, it wasn't really him who died because he had this scar on his lip and he looked emaciated and all this other stuff. And then King's story here kind of addresses why that happened. So I thought that was quite cool. Uh, everything's eventual the main story of this was actually pretty forgettable the road virus heads north was cool that was about like a haunted painting although I felt like I'd read that one before somewhere so who knows uh, that feeling you can only say what it is in French is about deja vu pretty good 
Riding the Bullet was also pretty good, but then the last story in this was called Lucky Quarter. Not so good, bit of a weak ending. All in all though, four out of five from me. Decent enough collection of short stories. It's probably not his me most memorable ones. Also, shout out to Matilda Gothica who commented on my one of my videos saying, saying when it's Stephen King, it's not short stories, it's long stories, which I agree with. But yeah, did enjoy that. And now I'm going for something short and sweet. I am reading Ollie Jacobs, Film It Cuts, Title Pending, Volume 4. So this is just short stories by Ollie Jacobs. This will be part of Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. But it's at least my second Indie Read of the Month. And hopefully there'll be a few more. So yeah, reading is going well. And then I've got a few things planned up next. And up next I'm probably going to do Joe Hill's uh, Lock and Key, the final volume, Volume 6. But... This seems like a good place to end this video. So as always, thanks for a lot for watching. Don't forget to the like, 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 bye, bye, like, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Also, you can see my face changing colour because I don't have a light on at the moment. So this is just my TV. Yeah, a little slideshow. See you later.